Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome to Canterbury Cottage. My oldest son, Nick, is moving in with his girlfriend, Amaya. And crazy as it sounds, my youngest son, Spencer, is moving into Amaya's basement. Her basement has not been updated since the 1980s or 90s, and it recently suffered some water damage when the sump pump malfunctioned. So needless to say, it is in desperate need of a makeover. In today's video, I'll be working on the family room and sharing some of my best ideas for dealing with problem areas. I'll also give you lots of tips on how to create a bright and cozy space in your basement or in any room in your home. I can't wait to show you the before and after photos. So let's get started. Here is the before. I'm guessing that most people think that white is the best paint color to make a basement seem big and bright. But in a room with little or no natural light, white paint can actually make a room look dull and dingy. If you're looking to brighten up your basement, a safer choice is to go with a neutral with a twist, a hint of another color. Neutrals with a hint of blue or green create both a bright and relaxing environment, which is why it's such a popular color used in spas and wellness centers. Before you start painting, make sure you remove all the plate covers and nails and screws that might be in the wall. Fill any holes or cracks with spackle. Lightly sand over the spackle once it's dry. I love the Gorilla Glue brand of spackle because it goes on really smooth and because it contains primer, it's easily covered with one coat of paint. I hate having to tape off areas before I start painting, so it's worth it to invest in a good quality angled paintbrush. Notice how much brighter the walls seem with the very light blue paint compared to the original white paint. Another tip to making your room seem bigger and brighter is to paint the ceiling with the same paint as you use on the walls. While you have your paintbrush out, consider painting the trim and doors black. That's right, I said black. As I mentioned before, white paint in a basement often looks dingy. Even freshly painted white baseboards may look dirty in a room with little natural light. And I was able to freshen up this 1990s bookcase just by painting the outside edges and trim with a little black paint. One of the biggest expenses in any basement makeover is likely going to be the cost of new flooring. And it is not an easy decision because there are so many things to consider, including the possibility of future water damage in your basement. This basement had some peel and stick vinyl tiles and some sheet vinyl that was starting to peel up. So I decided to remove the sheet vinyl as best I could. The vinyl itself came off easily, but it left a layer of paper that was still mostly stuck to the concrete. I had decided to install peel and stick carpet tiles, partly because it was something that I could easily install myself and I wouldn't have to buy a bunch of special tools. It would also add comfort and warmth to a basement that seemed somewhat cold and sterile. 
I also loved the idea that you can easily replace individual damaged carpet tiles. When I went shopping for the carpet tiles, I was shocked to discover that there is such a thing as a floating carpet tile. This was perfect for my situation. These carpet tiles could go directly over the remaining vinyl tiles still stuck to the basement floor and over the paper that I had unnecessarily been scraping up for hours. The carpet tiles are not adhered to the floor in any manner. They come with squares that are sticky on one side only. You adhere these to the four corners of each square so that each tile is connected to all of the other tiles, and that's what holds them in place. And because there is no adhesive on the back of the tiles, I was able to cut them with a sharp pair of regular scissors. This made it so easy to lay the carpet in odd spots, like this little space between the stairs and the wall. Although carpet tiles are a little more expensive than broadloom carpet, I was able to save a lot of time and money in labor since I was able to install two rooms with carpet tiles in less than a day. Rather than going out and buying all new furniture and decor, think about ways that you can freshen up what you already have. To further update this 1990s oak bookcase, I decided to apply some peel-and-stick wallpaper to the wall behind the bookcase. I chose a light blue and green grass cloth wallpaper that I purchased at Lowe's. This wallpaper was a splurge at about $40 for one roll, but I think it was money well spent. This bookcase is the first thing you notice when you enter the room from the stairs, and $40 is a lot cheaper than a new piece of furniture. I think the combination of the black trim and the grass cloth backing make this bookshelf look brand new. I often buy new switch plates when making over a room, but this time to save money because there were so many switch plates that I just washed them with some Dawn dish soap and reattached them. This old Ikea sofa had once been in my house and had definitely seen better days. I washed the cushion covers in my washing machine and let them air dry because the fabric is actually dry clean only. And I used my little Hoover upholstery cleaner to clean up the armrests on the sofa. Because IKEA furniture is smaller in scale and lower to the ground, it's actually perfect for a basement with low ceilings. Most basements have a problem area, and this basement has a few, most notably this pass-through window between the bedroom and living room, which doesn't allow privacy in the bedroom. But I had an idea inspired by the upstairs decor. I pried off the trim piece and caulked the nail holes and around the edges. I bought 12 furring strips and cut them to the height of the window. After I cut the first furring strip, I used that piece to measure and mark and cut the rest of the slats. I laid them out and measured them on my garage floor to make sure that I cut enough before I hauled them over to Amaya's house. Furring strips are a very cheap grade of wood, which is why they only cost $1.98 each, but they require a lot of sanding if you're going to use them inside your home. Amaya said she would like to have more of an overhang along this ledge, and so I bought a 2 by 8 by 10 piece of wood at Lowe's and had them cut it to length. 
I drilled several holes along the back edge of the piece of wood and then used two and a half inch wood screws to attach it to the piece of wood that was already there. I used a larger drill bit to countersink the hole and then I used a little bit of wood fill over the top of each screw before I painted the countertop. I had originally planned on attaching the wood slats on the front side of the window, but with the addition of this new countertop, I added them to the back instead. I used one furring strip as a spacer in between each of the slats and attached them to the window using my nail gun at the top and at the bottom to the back of the new counter. Wood with a rounded edge is much more expensive than a straight piece of lumber. So to dress up the front edge of my counter, I attached the piece of trim that I had previously removed from the top portion of the window. And once again, I filled in all of the cracks with caulk before I painted the countertop. I applied the same color of stain as I had used on the slats in the upstairs living room. I had also purchased a piece of hardboard at Lowe's and had them cut it to the size of the window opening. Amaya painted it black for me, and for some reason the camera was not on when I attached it behind the wood slats. But the camera did pick up this cute little helper. Not only did this project create privacy for the bedroom, but it also created a place for extra seating in the living room. It should go without saying that if you want a bright basement, then you need to add a lot of artificial light sources. Amaya wanted to keep these soffits full of recessed can lights, to add additional light to the basement, I removed the traditional light bulbs and replaced them with the larger bulbs made for recessed lights. And I updated the soffits with, you guessed it, more black paint. I much prefer lamp light to ceiling light, so I added a lamp next to the sofa, a lamp next to the chair, and a small accent lamp in the bookshelf. If you're not lucky enough to have recessed lights in your basement, be sure to hang at least one large mirror, which will help to bounce around the light that you do have. I spent the majority of my budget on new carpeting for the basement, so I furnished and decorated this entire room using only hand-me-downs and thrift store finds. Well, that's not completely true, because when I was buying wood at Lowe's, I saw these large feather prints on clearance, and I thought they would be perfect behind the sofa. I had wanted to float the sofa to break up the somewhat long and narrow room. Unfortunately, the sofa was too wide, and it just didn't leave enough walkway. All of the items on the bookshelf also came from thrift stores. I'll be sure to link another video in the description box if you would like to know my best tips for arranging items on a bookshelf. Here's one of my tips. Always include at least one plant to bring your shelves to life. Most of us use our basements to store many things that we don't have space for in our upstairs. So if we want to keep our newly decorated basement room clutter-free, we've got to include places to store things. I added three boxes and five baskets to this bookshelf, and right now they're all empty, but I'm sure they won't stay that way for very long. The wicker trunk coffee table and the Pier 1 end table that I made over in last week's video are also both empty. Amaya had helped me paint and had seen much of the basement makeover, but I didn't allow her downstairs during the last day while I decorated. 
Amaya's mother generously contributed to the cost of the makeover and joined Amaya for the reveal. Just the room where you dumped all the furniture you didn't want. <laughs> That's what it was before. <laughs> now here is my son Spencer's reaction. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but it's a lot nicer than whatever that was. Wow. <laughs> Do you remember how it looked before? Pretty out of date. You're going to do this. Black doors, black stools. Carpet too, it kind of brings everything together. Oh, I like it. It's cozy. It looks way better than I expected. You got a lot done in a little amount of time. As you can imagine, the majority of my time for the past week was spent painting the basement and working on the floor, which didn't leave me a lot of time for finishing touches. So there are still a few additions that I would like to make to the family room, and I'll be sure to include them in an upcoming video. But next week, I'll be tackling another room in the basement. Until then, I'll put a link in the closing slide of another room makeover that I think you'll like. If I haven't told you lately, I truly appreciate your kind support of my channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye for now.